Hi everybody, this is John Garrick and I'm coming to you from my backyard in Oregon City and this is 5 Minutes of Hope. I've been working hard during this pandemic to be able to share in the weekdays 5 minutes of encouragement. Sharing and talking about hope, attributes of hope, how we can be agents of hope, how we can foster hope in our lives. And today, the area of hope I want to talk about is how we can be agents of hope to people that are generally on the front line as encouragers and hope givers. So today, we're gonna to talk about encouraging the encouragers and giving hope to the hope givers. All right, out of 1 Thessalonians chapter five, there's this little scripture, two verses, uh, 10, verses 10, 11, 1 Thessalonians chapter five, 10, 11. Don't have time to get into the whole chapter, but it's a great, great chapter of the New Testament. Check it out in 1 Thessalonians. But it says this, he being Jesus died for us that whether we are awake or asleep, in other words, living or dead, we may live together with him. Whew, that alone is the center of my hope in life. That's really cool, dead or alive, he is our hope. And then it says this, therefore encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. Well, that admonishment from scripture is something that all of us are aspiring for because that's why we're listening to this. That's why you're interested about hope because we want to be givers of hope. But you know, there are people in our lives that all the time, they are on the front lines of giving. They're on the front lines of giving hope. So as we think about those people, I want us to identify how can we help them during this time. So think about who they are, first of all. They're those educators that are a part of your life, uh, coaches, teachers, administrators. My daughter's a fifth grade teacher. I know how hard she is working to stay connected with her students, their families, and the staff. So educators are people that are always out there. We're counting on to encourage our children. How about first responders? Man, when I was in an accident, they were right there. All they want to do is help and be an encouragement all the time, that's what first responders are doing. They're there protecting and wanna be encouragement to others. I, I want you to think about medical personnel. That's big right now. I mean, clearly they're the heroes and on the front lines, but not just the doctors and nurses, but what about technicians? What about CNAs? What about those people that are cleaning and making sure that the facility is safe for the healthcare workers as well as for the patients? Think of who those people are in your life. I'll bet names and faces are coming to mind even now. I want you to think about social services, people that work in foster care, child service protection, family services, all those, they, they're giving all the time, helping and being encouragement. They're stressed and stretched right now. How can you be an encouragement to them? And then what about counselors and therapists? Is there a psychologist or someone that comes to your mind right now that you're thinking, man, all the time they're listening and helping other people. I'll bet they're really stressed right now. I could be an encouragement to them so they can encourage others. And then what's near and dear to my heart, you guys know, is pastors and Christian leaders, priests, rabbis, chaplains, those that are serving all the time on the front lines, trying to shepherd and care for people. So think about those names and faces, write them down. Write down the names of those people now, because I'm gonna ask you to act upon this. I'm gonna ask you to be an encouragement to them so they can be an encouragement and hope givers for others. So this is what you can do. Here's some ideas, write them a note, email, text, anything, even a handwritten note, support the postal system, it'll be great. Just be an encouragement to those people, write them a note. Put a note or sign out in front of their house. If they're quarantined, put it in their front yard facing their house. If they're coming home, put it in the driveway when they come home, right in their yard with this cardboard sign that just gives them an encouragement, tell them you love them and tell them you're praying for them. How about praying? That is not like, oh, all I can do is pray. Well, get together with friends on the phone and via video and just begin to pray for these hope givers. Lift them up, support them. We believe that prayer really matters. So let's do it. Let's encourage those encouragers. And then what about some of the other things you can do? You can get them a gift. You can do something online. There's so many things that you could purchase on them. You could send them a meal. You could send food and order it online and send it to their house or their place of employment. You could give an extra gift or donation to the place that they're passionate about and their cause and just send them a note and say, hey, I just wanted to do this on your behalf. Just as I appreciate you so much. Uh, there's so many things that you could do. You could do a project around their home. They're, they're so busy helping others. You could do something with social distancing to help them around the house. Man, there's so many things we could do, but I hope this stirs in you some ideas of how you can be a loving hope giver to those that are on the front lines. And whatever you do, when you get this, if this is encouraging, subscribe, share, pass it on, follow. I don't know all the things you're supposed to do, but would you do that? And let's pass on the hope. Until next time, embrace hope wherever you find it.